Imagine that you found four pennies in your pocket. Well, that means you have four cents. Now pretend those pennies magically turned into dimes. Then you'd have 40 cents. Much better. Now in your other pocket, you have six pennies or six groups of one. And that means you have six cents. And then poof, those six pennies turn into six dimes again. Six groups of 10. So that means you have 60 cents. Now here's another comparison of pennies and dimes. If you have 12 pennies, well, that means you have 12 cents. 12 dimes means that you have 12 groups of 10. Oh my, this is starting to get big. But you can notice a pattern with the last couple of multiplication problems. When you compare pennies and dimes, you're really comparing ones and tens. So look at the answers. When we multiply by 10, the final answer has a zero in the ones place. 40 has a zero in the ones place. 60 has a zero as well. 10 has a zero in the ones place. When you multiply by tens, you can put a zero in the ones place as a placeholder in the final answer. This shortcut means that any time you multiply a number by 10, all you have to do is put a zero at the end of the number in the ones place. And now you can impress people with your ability to multiply large numbers. We'll look back at that big problem with 12 dimes. 12 times 10. 12 times 1 is 12. And if you take that answer of 12 and you add a zero to the end of the number so that the zero was now in the ones place, you'd get 120. Let's use another strategy just to make sure you're correct. Visualize 12 groups of 10. You could skip count by 10 or just add them all up and that would still give you 120. You can use the same strategy with other numbers that are groups of 10. You know that 50 is five tens. Well, let's look at an example that multiplies four by 50. Don't worry, we're gonna start by multiplying by five and ignore the zero in the 50. Four times five. Four groups of five, well, that would be 20. That wasn't too hard, was it? Now, four times 50, four groups of 50. Whew, that is a large number. 50 plus 50 is 100. 100 plus 50 is 150, plus 50 is 200. Wow, if we did that as an array, it would be huge. So let's use the shortcut that we just learned instead. Remember, our shortcut says all we have to do is add a zero at the end of the number. Huh, pretty cool shortcut, huh? But why does it work? Well, when you multiplied four times five, you got 20. The 50 is really five tens, so four times five tens equals 20 tens, which is the same thing as 200. Here's another problem. Three times 20. Now let's use the same strategy and patterns that you're already learning about. Start by multiplying three times two, and this gives you six. Now you can do three times 20, just add a zero to the end of that answer. Wow, 60. And another way to think about it is that 20 is two tens. So three times two tens is equal to six tens or 60. Now that you've learned how to multiply by tens, here are some problems to practice with. Let's go. A school assembly has four classes of 20 students attending. How many total students are there at the assembly? The classes are the groups, and so you would have four groups of 20. This means you're being asked to multiply four times 20. First, look at this as four times two. It's a little less scary that way. Eight. Now, since you were multiplying by 20 or two tens, you need to add a zero into your final answer. This makes 80 or eight tens. Awesome job. So that means that there are 80 total students at the assembly. Try another one. Three buses are being used for a field trip to a museum. And each of the buses has 30 people on it. So how many people are going to the museum? 
Well, the buses are the groups, and so you would have three groups of 30. This isn't a hard problem since you already know a great way to make it easier. 3 times 30 is the same as 3 times 3 tens. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, so 3 times 3 tens is 9 tens. 9 tens is 90. That means there are 90 people going to the museum. Great job! All right, one more to practice. There are seven bags of candy at a store. Each bag has 20 pieces of candy in it. So how many pieces of candy are there in total at the store? Well, this problem has seven groups of 20. Since you already know that 20 is two tens, you can make it easier and first multiply seven and two. Seven multiplied by two is 14. And since we are really multiplying by 20, which is two tens, our final answer is 14 tens. And we need to have a zero at the end of 14, and that makes it 140. So, there are 140 pieces of candy in total. Great job on all these problems! Let's just take a sec to sum up what we've learned. When you multiply by tens, or a two-digit number ending in zero, you can solve the problem by thinking about how many tens you're multiplying by. You can then place a zero at the end of the number for your final answer. You did an awesome job with the hard task of multiplying larger numbers. See you next time!